Mr. Cartoon has built himself a nice niche in the public sphere. From album covers, thanking superstar musicians, to lucrative brand deals, Mr. Cartoon is the epitome of art and commerce melding together without sacrificing artistic integrity. But who is Mr. Cartoon, and how did he get here? Mark Machado grew up in an area just south of LA to a middle-class family who encouraged his artistic inclinations, providing him with supplies and expanding his mind by taking him to art house movies and introducing him to different genres of music like psychedelic rock and disco. His parents' support manifested early when his father gave him the opportunity to design an advertisement for a window cleaning company. Even at the ripe age of 12, his talent shined and his father would regularly enlist him to design everything from restaurant menus, logos, and business cards. Cartoon knows this as his first real job he ever had. His father continued being a supportive force in his life by having him work on low lighter shops where he would sweep and do general labor. This sparked his interest in classic cars. In his teenage years, he naturally gravitated towards low rider culture. He would frequent car shows and even regularly attend low lighter Cholo church, which consisted of reformed born again Christians preaching heartfelt testimonials about the word of God. Around this time, inspired by the swap meets and designs of classic low riders, he began airbrushing. At first practicing on his own clothes, he even learned screen print graphics and old English letters on the hoodies. He quickly set up booths at local swap meets, customizing tees for a fee. His artistic ventures even bled into his school. He drew for the local high school newspaper and designed posters for his classrooms for extra credit. On the more illegal side of things, he was tagging, doing graffiti anytime and anywhere he could. This would eventually lead to him being arrested at school and having to pay a fine. He would turn those lemons into limoncello. Instead of rushing to get any gig he could to pay off the debt, he relied on his art, scouring the land for any brick and mortar that he believed would appreciate his talents and pay him. He would design and paint advertisement for barber shops, boxing gyms, or any business that seemed receptive to having someone spray paint on their walls. All this while doing street art. This is during the late 80s when an emerging new genre of music was taking over. It was called hip hop. Being enamored with the culture, Cartoon would go to parties, throw up tags, and get into some sketchy situations. But he always looked for sustainability. Being a true hip hop fan and on the scene in LA, he networked his way into Media Easy E. And by network, I mean he went to his house and knocked on the door. Easy happened to be starting his own record label and was in need of an in house designer. Getting him to listen to his elevator pitch, he showed up with art displayed on his classic low rider. Impressed, Easy gave him a chance, and Mr. Cartoon ended up creating album covers for acts like MC Ren, Above the Law, The Penthouse Players, and Care Frost. This would introduce him to a new world, giving him the ability to travel and make art, money, and connections. As a result of working with Ruthless Records, he meets what would end up being his longtime business partner and friend, Estevan Oreo. Estevan had worked in the music industry for a couple of years at this point as a road manager. They shared a fondness for custom low riders, art, and hip hop. At that time, Mr. Cartoon was cultivating a style of tattoo that blended fine line prison tats, New York style graffiti, and his own artistic interpretation. A lot of times adding depth, perspective, and a bit of character. His good friend Estevan invited him on the road for a Cypress Hill tour where he would ink the members and also see how making the stuff commodity worked. He watched Cypress Brazil do crazy shows, party, and bullshit, but he also witnessed what an agent does, the necessity of an accountant, and how to get your name out, essentially making yourself a brand. This would put him in rooms with important people in the entertainment industry and see more money than he had before. But this was just The connection with Cypress Hill's management team led to him meeting a popular rapper who went by the moniker Eminem. Tattooing him would change Toon's life forever. At the height of his career, adorning magazine covers, paparazzi pictures, and music videos, there was Mr. Cartoon's work, front and center, on full display. The pivotal piece was a portrait of Eminem's daughter with a classic car and the words Bonnie and Clyde in reference to his song. Cartoon would ink him a few more times and later designed a logo for his shady records. Toon was now in high demand. Eminem would effectively become his walking portfolio, and everyone wanted their own. Everyone from 50 Cent, Travis Barker, Kanye West, to even Beyonce. 
cartoon that decorated some of the most decorated artists, athletes, and entertainers of this century. He reached success not familiar with most tattoo artists. He was booked around the clock and the price was going up, but he never forgot his roots. Still doing tattoos for his homies, blue collar folks, and inmates alike. Only now he can tattoo in his studio instead of someone's couch or in a club. He opened up a studio right on Skid Row and began doing residencies in some of the most exclusive places around the world. But being a true artist, that didn't stop him from branching out. He opened up a marketing agency where he delves into the world of logo design and branding. It's called Soul Assassin Studio Global with his longtime business partner and friend, Estevan. He's collaborated with some of the largest companies in the world. Microsoft, Harley-Davidson, Rockstar Games, Vans, Nike, Uno, Metro PCS, Universal Pictures, Fox Pictures. With all the fame, acclaim, and work he had put in, the fine art world had to take notice. Being another obstacle to accomplish, he delved into the world, selling out gallery shows, having exhibits in the Mocha in LA, and pieces being featured in auction houses like Phillips. But with all the success, being of service to the community is a virtue of his. He regularly participated in youth outreach where he shares his knowledge of art and business. Mr. Cartoon's advice for anyone looking to make something of themselves is whatever you're obsessed with, do it. Do it to the fullest. Submerge yourself in it, be dope, and stick to things that contribute to your community. Wherever you work, be the person that cares. Be the person that helps people. Maximize yourself and surround yourself with like-minded people that want to see you win. With a mindset like that, it's no wonder Mr. Cartoon has gotten so far.